Hello and welcome to C2 Biosciences Testing Insight Series. In this video, we'll go over the details of three techniques for plating bacteria, which are standard plating, pore plating, and filtration plating. Enumerating microbial populations, whether it's for research purposes or as a mechanism to help evaluate certain product performance by means of an established antimicrobial testing standard, can be highly valuable information. So stick around and join us as we share a passion for science with you. Three microbial plating techniques widely used are standard plating, pour plating, and filtration plating. Standard plating involves diluting a sample and then applying it to a plate with a medium in order to discern countable bacterial colonies as a measurement of the number of microorganisms in that known dilution. Countable is the operative word here. Though much of the world of microbiological testing can be infinitely technical and variable, it's also keenly practical. We need to get to a place where we can count a reasonable amount of something. Bacterial counts into the hundreds is more reasonable than attempting to count into the thousands, or let alone millions. Let's break that down a bit more. Often, when determining the concentration of a bacterial culture by standard plating, Dilutions of the culture are plated and incubated to allow colonies to form. The aim is to have a plate that generally contains a few dozen to a few hundred colonies. More than a few hundred would be difficult to count due to overcrowding, which reduces the ability to differentiate one colony from another. On the other hand, too few colonies may not accurately reflect the concentration of the plated culture. The pour plating method involves taking a certain volume of sample and mixing it with the molten medium and then pouring it onto a plate. What's cool about this method is that because of this mixing, bacteria can grow on both the surface and within the media. However, with pour plating, one can get lower counts because microbes can die when they come into contact with this hot medium. Benefits of this method include more precision by virtue of the bacteria growing in the auger. They're smaller, which makes it easier on the eyes to count. Additionally, they don't overgrow, which means colonies don't end up being in so close of proximity that they merge, which is helpful in being able to distinguish certain details. One prominent issue with this technique is that sometimes, when mixing the inoculum and auger in the plate, the media doesn't distribute evenly, which can make things more difficult when it grows. This is because it can result in some spots on a plate with more pronounced areas of growth and other spots with a dearth of growth. In filtration plating, a relatively large volume of bacterial culture is passed through a filter with a specific pore size which prevents microbes from passing through. The filter, with the captured microbes, is then plated on an auger medium and incubated to facilitate colony formation. This allows for the accurate determination of colony forming units in a culture, which is particularly useful when determining the concentration of dilute cultures. When evaluating which methodology is most useful, determining one's needs first is essential. What is it that you're trying to accomplish? What kind of information are you looking for? And then from there, you can look into the details of the approach itself. Plate counting alone and the methods are one thing, while context is another. Factor in the industry, product, academic or professional pursuit, and things start to narrow as to what to look for. We hope you gain some more knowledge about these three microbial plate count techniques. Make sure to like and subscribe for more insightful videos from us. And if you haven't already, start learning about some of the methods we offer through our Test Method Introduction Series playlist. Stay tuned for more from C2 Biosciences.